today on Unpacked. For me, the show was absolutely conducive to me finding love. The reason why I chose her family was because of those spicy chicken livers. Those <laughs> were... It was the food! I'm, I'm in a great place right now and it's all because of her. I can't let that go. Mm. Oh, if he chose the money, were you still going to move in with him? <sighs> <laughs> I mean, if he EFT'd me after this. <laughs> Finding love is hard enough with its many challenges. Imagine doing it in front of the country or even the world. Our guests are here to share their stories. Let's unpack. Timna Shutu and Libo Geza wore their hearts on their sleeves when they entered the first season of a show where they would battle other singles to find their loves of their life. Not only did they win the competition, but they won each other's hearts too. Gudani Mashainu and Vivian Bryant entered a competition that saw them vie for each other's love with the intervention of their families. Three years later, they are still together and even engaged. These are their love stories. Let's unpack. Libo Timna, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you so much us. for having us. And joining us via VideoCon, we have Gudani and Vivian. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for joining us. Hey, <laughs> we are good, we are good. So the four of you did the crazy thing of exposing yourselves and being vulnerable on television. I'm going to start with you, Libo. What made you decide that actually I want to expose myself, be on television and have people watch me possibly get rejected? When it comes to love, I didn't really have hope. Like, I, I just thought the same thing that happens in real life is going to happen when I'm on the island anyways. So I didn't have really high hopes of finding someone. And once I met him, now I, I knew exactly what I've been missing my whole life. And mm. it's literally somebody who trusts me. So, yeah, going on a show, I mean, it was a, a why not? But mm. in the hopes of finding love, I thought it was impossible. But uh, here I am. But you also had the incentive of money. Of course. So it wasn't just about finding love. You guys had a jackpot. I, I, I didn't have the money on my mind. <laughs> I don't, if we had it on my mind, I think I, we wouldn't have won it anyway. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Timna, what was your motivation? And did you also find that you were struggling in the real world? Oh, 100%. I just felt like, you know, the guys on the outside were not stepping up. So I just thought... You know what, let me just take a chance because I've always played my life safe and I just mm. thought, oh, let me just do something out the box for once. Mm. And it turned out amazing. I wouldn't change anything. And what's interesting is the show you guys were on is like you're barely wearing anything most of the time. <laughs> so it's not even like you're dating fully clothed like you guys are today. <laughs> so what, what um, elements or dynamic did that add to the dating for you? I think I'm just so used to seeing people half naked anyways because I live on the coast. So, And obviously on Instagram, you see people half naked all the time. Yes. So it wasn't really anything different or anything weird for me. It to also be helps naked. helps with uh, breaking the ice because one of our first interactions, she asked me to put sunscreen on her. So that was... Mm, uh, mm, okay. mm, mm. <laughs> I'm just like, these things don't really happen in exactly. real life, but I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Once you get past those uncomfortable moments, then you're, you're in there. It's a great icebreaker, I'll say. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Kudani, on your side, I mean, you guys went on a show where you are dating somebody's family and you get to select a person. So what was it that made you say, I want to go on this show and put myself out there? Well, for me, uh, most of all, it was just the curiosity, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was it was really a spur-of-the-moment decision just to go and try it out. Um, I was surprised when, when I was accepted into it. And then I went into the whole situation just, you know, trying to be as open-minded as possible. You know, I wasn't really expecting to find anything. Um, but I also wasn't closing myself up to the, you know, possibility of finding something as well. Vivian, did you have the same sentiments? Well, for me, it was a bit of a rushed, unexpected thing, firstly. Um, the way it all happened, um, I don't know, man. For me, it was just like, okay, we go, we do. 
whatever happens, happens. It is what it is, you know. In terms of what your views were, because the show that Libo and Timna were on, we've never had it in South Africa. You guys were now the first group. But for you guys, that show's been on for a while. So you already know beforehand that, yo, you could get laughed at, become a meme. Did that ever play into your mind to be like, I'm worried of becoming a joke of some sort? I think while watching, as, as a person that, you know, has been watching the show, um, you, you always watch the show and you're on Twitter, just reading all the Twitter feeds. So, you know, like in the moment that people are watching, uh, there's going to be like a lot of back and forth and, you know, a lot of laughter and all that kind of stuff. But in the long term, I never thought to myself that like, hey, this would lead to me being like a meme that people would be using, you know, from past when the, 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 the show is, has aired or anything of the sort. I thought, yeah, just at that time when they're watching, yeah, they might have a laugh here or there. And that's about it. Mm, mm. So, Kudani, were you the one choosing or being chosen? Uh, I was the one choosing. And if they had selected you to be one of the ones being chosen, would you still have been on the show? Yeah, yeah, I would have. I would have. Because you know, it, it, was, it was for the experience, you know, like um, it seemed like something that, that was fun to do. So I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Uh, Vivian, on your side, would you have actually wanted to be the one doing the choosing? Uh, I never actually thought about that part, to be honest. Um, either way, it would have been fine. Mm, mm. I just feel like the ones <laughs> being chosen are in, in a more vulnerable position. Yes, that's true. But as well, I think because you never really know what to expect with the guys, whether you're choosing or being chosen, you just never really know what to expect. Mm. So I think I wouldn't know what the experience is like, obviously, being the one that's choosing. But, yeah, it would have been OK for me. Yeah. So, um, Libo, I mean, you mentioned earlier on that you were not really winning in love outside of that whole experience. What was your experience of dating? Because the dynamics of dating have completely changed in the era of, you know, technology, digital, social media. Uh, for me, I really thought I was um, a, a bad person when it comes to relationships. I feel like, you know, I never really stepped up or was a, a good guy. Um, I, I, can't go into the details of it, but... Why not? Tell us, <laughs> tell us what you mean by that. Do you mean in terms of the fact that when you were in a relationship, mm. you were not a great boyfriend or you could have uh, been doing better? Like, what, what specifically yeah, do you Yeah, I wasn't mean? a great boyfriend. Um, I didn't think I could be in a serious relationship. I just thought it wasn't for me. I, I just thought it wasn't meant for me. Mm. So uh, I went on Love Island thinking the same thing. Mm. And then all of a sudden, I find someone who actually trusts me and doesn't look at me at first glance and be like, oh... You, you look like a type of person and... Uh, a playboy. You know, I, yeah, exactly. A <laughs> and I don't have to prove myself. Yes. And, you know, I could just be myself from the get-go. So yes. that was great. You didn't think when you met him that he was what he thought he was? No, not really. I was just... You know, sometimes you just have to give people a chance because yes. I've had people assume things like that about me, that oh, I probably am talking to 10 other men. Yes. And, you know, I'm just, you know on everyone's hit list or anything like that. So I just thought, you know what, I would like someone to give me the benefit of the doubt and mm. not think that I'm talking to other people and just see me for what I am. Mm. So I just thought I had to extend that to him. Mm. And then just, you know, maybe good karma comes back and maybe he thinks positively of me as well. I think what's interesting, obviously, your guys' dating experiences over a period of time, over a couple of weeks, and... Um, you can't really hide away from anything, no. right? <laughs> As opposed to, you know, Gudani and Vivian, who it's a one day, possibly second day, in the case of themselves, second day experience. It's quick and easy. Maybe they're exposing their family members. You guys don't have to expose your family <laughs> members. So I want to talk about those dynamics of, did you ever feel like I'm so tired of being here, I actually want to go home? Even if going home and going home with her early on. Definitely. On the show, I was <laughs> close to being miserable at some stage. You know, Why? I felt like such a big part of myself has been stripped away. And there was a time mm. where on the show, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm quite not to just close the kakaako. And, you know, I, I was just not used to being in an environment with so many different type of people. So, you know, 
all of those things. I, I kept telling Timna, like, I must go to Kipra. And mm. uh, she didn't. <laughs> she told me to stay. And... She wanted the money. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was like, oh, we are seeing this through. We are staying. Yeah. I don't know. I just felt like, you know, we were being received well because mm-hmm. we were so authentic and we were just ourselves and we got along so well. So I was like, you know what? I think we have a chance. Let's just stay and see this through. How did you actually know? Because I'm not sure when you guys are in the house, do you have access to your phones? Nothing. Are you able to? So you don't have access to your phones Nothing. at all. So how did you know that the public was receiving? you well? I felt it. Wow. I don't know how, but I was like, you know what, I think we're doing well. Um, I was doubting her. <laughs> I had to convince him a lot. I was like, The woman know, is always right. This exactly. is the lesson. This, this is true. It's the intuition. I just felt like I, you know when you just feel something, mm. you're like, yeah, I feel mm. it. I think we're doing well and I think there's a lot more for us mm. when we're done than if we just quit now. Yes, I, I just so. thought the public would see me in the way I see myself before I went on Love Island. So, yes. Yeah, I've always had those negative connotations about myself. And uh, yeah, I think those are the things that told me, bah, I'm a nobas go to, and nothing's yes. going to change. Mm. Look, the interesting thing as well is there's other personalities. So let's say people do see you as a bad boy. Mm. Sometimes there's a worse boy you know, that might have been before you that makes you look great. But I get what you're saying. I mean... I don't think men speak about this often, but where, as a man, you measure yourself in terms of, you know, being a right partner for a person, particularly in your age of being in your in your 20s, is that something that, because you mentioned something interesting to say, I never thought I was that guy. Mm. In your mind, was it that, like, I'm going to be a bachelor for life, living this wild life, even when you're 40 and falling apart? Like, <laughs> you're still going to be chasing after a young 20-year-old girl. Is that what you had in I, your I mind? I didn't even want to get to t- uh, to 40. I was like, ah, I'm going to live my life until maybe 35, and then, you know. And then what? I don't know. Sign don't know. out of life. <laughs> just, just, like, no, God, I'm good now. So, yeah, I, I really had a, a different perception to what I have now. Yes. And uh, yeah, that's one thing I'll thank the show for, as well as uh, improving my relationship with my parents. I was never honest with them about my life because mm. they were so, you know, overprotective of me. Um, my parents or my mom gave birth to me when she was 39. So, you know, the age difference and the old fashionedness of her, mm. you know, never allowed me to open up. So being on the show allowed me to open up anyway. So, yeah. So what what is the home setup in terms of your parents, mm. are they still together? Have yes. you always known them to be together? Yes, I've always known them to be together. Um, I have an older sister. She's 19 years older than me. So wow. I was really just that late guy. The light gr- lamb. Gr- yeah, growing up in the 2000s where things have changed, but yeah. my parents still have the perceptions of 1970s or whatnot. So why was that not a worry for you that you're going to be on TV and your parents are going to see you saying and doing some crazy things. It was a worry before I went on, but when I was on, I didn't think about my parents. I think that's one thing. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> I, didn't think about you. I didn't think of what they're seeing because yes. I had to stay in the moment. If I didn't yes. stay in the moment, I would have closed myself off. I think some of the viewers would know, but I really didn't think of my parents at some time. Yes. Yeah. But you told them before you were going on the show, you're going. Oh, that was a tough one, um, telling them because they didn't know what the show was. The girl in Gokuti, I'm going to act in Cape Town. She's like... <laughs> <laughs> and, I can't believe you said that. It's then, just pretend. <laughs> and then um, my, my dad was like, okay, cool. Because he's not going to ask me any questions. My mom was like, okay, what's the name of the show? I'm going to Google it. Then she's like, oh, this is a dating show. I'm like, are you ready? She was like, are you ready? I'm like, yeah. So, yeah, that's all. Okay, okay. What about your family? My family is very laid back. I told my mom, mom, I'm going on Love Island. You're going to yes. see some half-naked boys. You're going to see me in thong bikinis. I'm probably going to be kissing guys there. And she was like, okay, cool. So, yeah, I'm very honest with my mom. I've yes. never hidden anything. I tell her about everything. So it wasn't really that much of a difficult transition for me to get on the show. And my mom's just been cheering for me since day one, so... What is your relationship with your dad like that informs how your perception of men was like in terms of the dating space? Um, Jeez, that's tough. (laughs) Well, my biological father is not in my life, Mm. but um, I've had a father figure for all my life and I've Mm. been spoiled rotten. So I was never really lacking in Mm. that area. And 
Well, he is very strict. Mm. So he literally told me I could only date from 25. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> that is very deep. <laughs> I know. Um, so, yeah, but like after that, because I've obviously reached and passed the 25 year kind of <laughs> restriction, I was very free to take him back to my family and show him around and just be casual. Like, mm. I wasn't shy at all. So I think I did them proud by waiting until 25. So I was going to say, <laughs> let's use this opportunity to tell dad when you did start actually dating. Um, geez, like high school. But it wasn't anything serious. Baba. It wasn't anything serious. <laughs> <laughs> it's just puppy love things, you know, yes. having crushes and stuff. But it wasn't anything serious. He's relieved to hear that. Uh, <laughs> Vivian Kudani. Uh, your guys will show you expose your family. So let me start with you, Gudani. How do you tell your fam? Uh, in the case of you, you don't have your family on there, but how do you tell them, guys, I'm going to be doing this show, I'm going to be exposing myself, or it wasn't even a conversation? Like, uh, yeah, no. In, in my case, it wasn't necessarily a conversation. Um, I told my mom to name that, like, yeah, I was thinking about doing this, this thing. And they were more excited about it than I was. You know <laughs> they were just like, yeah, yo, you better do it. Yeah, they're actually busy pulling out outfits for me, just like racking up my wardrobe. Like, it was crazy. It was crazy. They're crazy. Yeah, yeah. And from your side, Vivian, how do you convince your family that, listen, let's all do this, let's all get on board and do this show? Um, Like I said, it was kind of all last minute and stuff, but they were also very excited. Like, so excited. They were there on set with us helping, just like Gurani's family, they were like, okay, this will look good. Let's cook this. Let's do that. Giving, they were giving me tips. They were actually, like, like they were so, so excited. It was as if they were going on the show, like, looking for uh, a relationship. So, yeah. What did you cook in your episode? Sure, it was so long ago. <laughs> Um, that's the that's the meal that won this man's heart. So you need to remember, <laughs> girl. <laughs> I don't think it was the meal that won the man's heart. It was the person. <laughs> My family represented me very well. Mm. <laughs> but um, we cooked. Um, I think this, we had a starter of uh, spicy chicken liver, mm. and then we had a main of was it was it meatballs and and pasta. And then we had dessert, it was like cookies and cream. Okay. Kudani, do, do you agree with what she said? Uh, <clears throat> with the, the reason the heart is still in, I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you, the reason why I chose her family was because of those spicy chicken livers. Those <laughs> were... It was the food! <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> Oh, please, Kudani, you know it's not the food, dude. <laughs> Vivian, I hope you know, Khur, if there isn't, if there aren't spicy chicken livers in that house at least once a week, it's over. <laughs> he hasn't had spicy chicken livers in months, in years even. <laughs> you, so actually you're saying that, that you, <laughs> you guys were on the show more than two years ago. So you guys have actually been together for quite a while. Did you, Kudani, think, you know, after you guys went on your first date, that there's potential for this to be real? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it was um, right on the first first date, um, just, just after I met her family, uh, when we're in the car heading back, I told her, I was just like, dude, you're going to be my girl. There's, there's no way around this. Like, we ain't about to be friends, you know? And I think within the first couple of weeks, I was just like, I told myself, I was like, I, I even told my mom, I was like, you know, I'm going to marry this girl. Wow. wow. That's beautiful. That's, I, I love it when a man, like, knows. Because we, we hear the stories of men that put you in that, like, reserve seat for years, but you're dating, and then, like, all of a sudden, he's marrying someone that he met three months ago mm. because he knows. Did you have a moment of just, I know, when you met Timna? Yeah, definitely. I went on a date with one of the bombshells, um, somebody who came in. What is a bombshell? A bombshell is what I did. So she entered the show with the original cast. Yes. And then uh, we get put in. 
at some times yes. to, you know... Stir things up. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so a bombshell showed some great interest in me. Um, and we had a great conversation, great chemistry. But then I came back and told her about my date, that it went well. And she was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I'm happy. I'm like, oh, why aren't you like jealous or anything like that? And uh, that's when I realized, but she really does trust me. And, you know, I can be 100% honest with her. And, you know, I won't face any repercussions. So can he still tell you today I went on this awesome date? <laughs> great. Well, I know the girl and we're friends, so I understand what he saw in her at the time. So she is great. But yeah, I just, you know, in life when you're like, you know, I have options. Even if I'm in this environment, I have options. And there really is no use in trying to fight for someone's attention if they're not for you. And he showed me that even though he had someone else's attention, that he was for me. So that was, mm. was, was great. Because mm, like a couple of calls. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, just in terms of the, the conversation around family, right? When you, you guys are still in your 20s and I'm not trying to be that old auntie, but I am that old auntie <laughs> in your 30s. It's like, are you, do you go into dating with the intention of, okay, let's see how it goes? Or are you very intentional to say, because you say, oh, I knew. Are you intentional, like, eventually, the same way Kudani said, this woman's going to be my wife? Mm -hmm. Do you have that mindset? Yeah, of course. I mean, my parents couldn't wait to meet her. Um, and, you know, I see her as uh, a catalyst and so many good things in my life right now. Like, the fact that I can be honest with my parents, honest with my partner. And, you know, I'm, I'm in a great place right now, and it's all because of her. I can't let that go. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guys, you make us want to Jola <laughs> and come Jola. Uh, Kudani, there's something that I think is quite interesting about your guys' dynamics is that you meet the family before you meet the woman, whereas usually a woman's trying to be like, oh, when am I taking this guy home to meet my family? Did that mean from the onset the family was involved in the relationship? Um, yeah, you can say so. You can say so because, I mean, like, since I'd already met a portion of a family, it just made meeting the rest of them just a lot more fluid because, like, we already knew each other. There wasn't uh, necessarily that uh, that whole process of, you know, having to wait to meet, you know, certain important figures in their life or anything like that because they'd already seen me, uh, we'd already communicated. And then those that hadn't seen me were going to see me on the telly afterwards. And, you know, yeah. so it was, it just made the whole process a lot easier, um, both from my end and her end, yeah. Vivian, when you, when you were chosen and you went on the first date, was your family hammering you for information when you came back? Um, that, that, uh, that day, I actually didn't see them after the date. I saw them the next day. But because of how excited they were, they wanted to know what would happen. Um, they wanted to know how the date went, sorry. Um, but they weren't like, you're riding my back about it like that. Or, but, it, but they were really excited to just see what would happen further on. Because like I said, they, for them, they were so confident about the outcome of the whole him coming, they, for them, it was almost as if they knew. They were like, nah, he's coming back. I Listen, I'm, I'm all for love. I absolutely love a good love story. And I'm so glad that the medium that I'm so familiar with, which is television, can actually facilitate those kind of introductions. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about your guys' show and the dynamics that actually made dating difficult? Was there a downside to it that you experienced? I think seeing someone 24-7, even though it can have its positives because you get to know them, but it felt very rushed. It felt very quick because, yeah. you know, they tell you that, you know, one week in here feels like, I don't know, two months. Yeah. So that's what it felt like. It felt like, you know, will the spark die because we've been around each other for so long and we know everything, mm. you know, will there still be some mystery? But... Yeah, I think that's what I struggled with the most. I felt like maybe I was moving too fast because mm. it is my first serious relationship. Mm. <laughs> hey, <yeah>. Dad. <laughs> first. But yeah, I thought maybe, you know, is it, am I moving too fast? Yeah. You know, so yeah, that was my biggest concern, I think. And for you? 
I don't, I don't think there was anything. For me, the show was absolutely conducive to me finding love. Like, I, I wouldn't change anything about the mm. setup. Because um, we went back home, right, after the show, and we spent about a week away from each other. I was like, I can't do this anymore. So we have to move in together, and we did wow. it literally the next week. <laughs> and uh, wow. we've been living together since. So, yeah, for me, the show was... Perfect. Plus a core phone, so, you know, that's a plus as well. Yes. Mm. And I think it's like what you say, on the one hand, it it's, feels rushed, but mm. on the other hand, you get to fizzle out the BS early on. Mm. So anything that you already know this is not for me, you can mm. deal with it up front, as opposed to maybe knowing this person for three weeks, which equates to four months in, in real life, and only then, four months later, discovering that, uh, you wait, wasted mm. all of that time. That's so I think true. that's quite great. I want to know about the money. <laughs> you guys won a million rands to share. Did you split 50-50 or did somebody take majority? So the format of the show is, you know, you pick an envelope at the end. Yes. Uh, the winners pick an envelope and uh, one envelope has zero rand. The other has one million. She picked the one with zero rand. I said mm. ladies first, and yes. you know she she, <laughs> she picked, said me. Yeah. <laughs> she picked the one with zero rand, um, and then they ask you once you have the million rand that do you pick to split or do you pick to you know take all the money? Mm. Uh, do you choose love or money? And mm. then uh, I chose love, and uh, yeah, it was split fifty fifty. And um, had you guys discussed that prior? Was that always your strategy? It wasn't really a strategy. It was a, we made a joke about it yeah, yeah, a lot of the time. I said, if I get the envelope, <laughs> I'll take the money. And the islanders were like, we're like, okay, guys, what are we going to do? Like, yes, whoever yeah. wins, who, what Who's are you going to do? Who's going to pick the money? Yes. You know? We're like, yo, this is Love Island, South Africa. Let's be, you know, corrupt. Yes. <laughs> and then I couldn't when it came to all of that. Yes. If he chose the money, were you still going to move in with him? <sighs> I mean, if he EFT'd me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he, he would have now been a millionaire. Yeah. Now you guys are half millionaires each. I would have had a rich boyfriend anyway. So I, I, it's, oh. just, it's just nice to, you know, have that half. My <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. I think about that night a lot, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, some, sometimes when she makes a financial decision, I'm like, yay, I need to need a bit. Did you guys discuss what you were doing with your money before you got it? Yeah. Mm. Not before. No, afterwards. No. We didn't think about the money, honestly. Like, um, because she's the real prize. No, I mean, yes, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but in the show, it's really, you know, you don't really have time to think about the future or what's mm. going to happen. So, you know, you have to just stay in the moment. And uh, yeah, mm. that's, that's mm. all that happens. So we only discussed all of those things like finale day, maybe. Okay, I'm going to start with you, Tim. Now, what did you do with the money? Well, first of all, I had to make sure that um, we found a good place to stay, mm -hmm. which obviously we split the rent. Um, yes. Furniture, clothes, <laughs> <laughs> um, hair. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, just, you know, general, putting it away, investing it. Yes. You did a, a huge chunk of that was for that, yeah. Did you start getting phone calls from long lost relatives and friends? I actually did not. Not at mm. all. It was very quiet on my side. Mm. I was actually the one wanting to reach out to people. Like, you know, to what can I do to money. help you? Yes. Wow. I was the one reaching out to my cousins like, um, you know, can I help you with anything? Asking my mom if she needs anything around the house. Yeah. She wants me to fix anything. So, yeah. It wasn't, you know, anyone looking for me. I was looking for people to help. Mm. So. That's very generous mm. of you. I'll give you my numbers. <laughs> 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 what about you? What did you do with the money? What she's saying is, the same for me. Yeah. Um, no one really reached out and I was just looking to help. I mean, you know, we do live in a third world country and there's mm. no way that all your family members are well off. Mm. So, you know, you try, you know, to reach out and, uh, you know, I let my mom really just dictate my I go per ban ban or mm. something like that. And um, yeah, so we just use the money as our I'd like to say a financial foundation. You know, mm. we have a relationship foundation, a friendship foundation, and it was a financial foundation, which, uh, yeah, it goes with all three pillars you need for a relationship. I apologize in advance for what's going to happen with your DMs after oh. this conversation. Nah. <laughs> okay, I apologize. We were like, you said you were looking for someone to We know to how help. to pick and choose. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Vivian and Gudani, you guys actually were not only on one rea uh, reality dating show. You did one, you got together, 
And then afterwards, you went to another one where you required help with saving your relationship, saving your marriage. So talk to me about that. And I'll start with you, Vivian. What are the circumstances that brought you to that point? Okay, so for us, it was it was more of a um, pre-marital counseling um, mm. type of situation because Gurani had proposed um, a few months prior to that. And then... Um, with the show, it was that they were looking for a younger demo, a demographic mm. to, to appeal to a younger demographic. So they asked us if we would be interested. And then for me, it was like, you know what? Um, it's counseling professionals that can help us, a marriage coach. Um, let's see if um, we're making the right decision regarding our relationship, if it's worth going further. And it would be better to obviously iron out certain issues before tying the knot. Mm. So for me, it was more of that. Having um, that sort of guidance so that we are able to... Because, I mean, who wants to divorce? Mm. You know, you don't get married with the intent to divorce. So for me, it was that of rather we do this now, we make a, a, an, an informed decision and then take it from there. So what did that whole uh, experience actually do for your relationship, Vivian? Well, it raised a lot of awareness, for one. You know, um, I feel like there was just a lot of unlearning that we both needed to do, mm. a lot of learning as well. Um, so it just helped us communicate better. It helped us um, make better decisions for us as well, work as a team more than against each other because Gudani and I are both very stubborn people. So whew, communication sometimes gets very tricky. Mm. Um, but it also helped us learn to be more open to um, meeting the other halfway mm. as opposed to feeling like you are right all the time or your needs are more important than that of his or mine, mm. or, you know. Mm. So it just helps us reach a common ground. Kudani, what was your key takeaway from that experience? Well, um, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say the one, the one thing that 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 really stuck with me is that uh, the lessons that you actually learn during that process, um, during all the counseling and the therapies and all that type of stuff. It, it doesn't actually kick in immediately. It kicks in way after you're done mm -hmm. with, with everything. You know, it, it's, it's like a slow click. Um, but, once, but, once, but, but once you have that click, you, you get to see like a, a new type of relationship blossom. You know, so some of the things that Vivian was saying, you know, um, to speak to that point or to speak to those points, the relationship transitions from, you know, that initial lovey-dovey phase, you know, and then it gets it gets hard because now you're in a proper relationship. There's all these responsibilities and things. And in all of that, you guys lose each other, you know? Mm -hmm. So what that show and all the lessons we learned from there, what that was able to do for us was to bring it all back to that good place where, you know, we all love you, Dovey, but at the same time, now we're conscious of the responsibilities and the duties which we both have uh, in the relationship and to each other. And I think it's so, so critical. I'm glad that you guys were able to have that experience um, because it's basically upgrading your toolbox. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys reached a point yet? I mean, your relationship is still quite young, but you took a big step of moving in together. Have you reached a point where you felt like we might need outside, not even help because we're in trouble, but we want to preempt anything for the future? I'd say yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, to, to a point we knew at the start of our relationship, well, we have to be very honest and mm -hmm. communicate a lot and be very transparent. And that's what helped me after that date I was talking about earlier. It was like, oh, okay, I can't really open up about anything to Lund. Mm. And that's the biggest thing that helped me with this relationship is that, you know, I, I can actually communicate how I feel 
Um, when I'm not happy about certain things, I'm, I'm not really going to hide it. I'm not afraid of losing this relationship because I think that's what happens when you try to neglect communication is when you're trying to protect someone else's feelings. We mm. just, you know, we are 100% honest with each other and uh, at all times. And what about on your side? I think I, I definitely agree with what he's saying. You can't neglect certain things because we've been exposed to each other 24-7 since the beginning. Mm. So we don't know any other way but to be open mm. and to speak about every little thing. And speaking about things, um, the more you do it, the less you feel like it's conflict mm. because it's literally just opening up about how you feel. Yes. So, yes. yeah, I think it's been really good for us in that way. Did you ever get an opportunity now because... In your guys' dynamics, there were un other individuals that you could be dating at the same time, where you now see the other side because the footage is there, it's been broadcast. Did you ever look at it or you decided that you don't need to watch it? <laughs> um, I watched, but I was just like, because, you know, obviously the editing and stuff, you're not really going to see 100% of yes. everything, but there are certain things where you're like, oh, but you didn't say that you yeah. said that or you reacted like that when you came back and you told me about the date. Yeah. So, but sometimes you just have to take a step back and think, you know what, it's not 100% of what happened. Mm. And you definitely have to trust your partner and to believe what they say because you know them to be that honest and open with you. So it wasn't really a problem. But there were certain things that I was like, hmm, you didn't really say that. But <laughs> it was okay. Did you feel the same way about her? I could not watch it back. <laughs> Why? I, I literally couldn't. Um, <laughs> I mean, one of the first episodes I watched, I was already, you know, not happy with what I'm seeing. Um, you know, there's a, there's a time whereby she has a conversation about someone else, you yes. know, and I'm like, Ugh, I wish you would have told me that, you know, instead yes. of, you know, just telling this other guy that. Yes. So, yeah, it's, it's things like that. I was like, ah, uh -uh, I know was. I really. So you're just not going there. I'm good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you guys are so different, but you are so unified in the path that you're on and your journey. Um, Kudani and Vivian, I mean, is there anything that you would like the viewers to know about your journey and your experience on that show? Uh, one of the most important things that I've learned is don't be too afraid to ask for help if, you know, your situation or your relationship is feeling a little bit difficult. Mm. Uh, sometimes it does take an outside perspective to give you mm. better clarity. Um, and once you have that clarity, you will, you're you then able to take action and, you know, actually do something to resolve whatever it is that uh, may be the issues in your relationship. I'd say that's probably the most important thing. Um, and then the second thing is... Get friends that are in similar relationships to yourself. So if you guys are married, start hanging around with married people. Don't be mm. hanging around with single people because that's just going to cause you problems and headaches. Because y'all's life, life trajectories are not the same. Mm. They're not the same. So you need to surround yourself with uh, similar-minded uh, people and people in similar situations. Um, if, if it is your, 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 your relationship goal to be a couple that's wealthy and you know, successful, find other couples that are on that same path that you, know, you guys can sit there and have great conversations and push each other forward. I'd say those are the two most important things that I, I picked up from that. And you, Vivian? So um, for me, uh, the important, one of the important ones was about the love languages, that, you know, it's easy to expect someone to, 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 to understand your love language or for you to want to love that person with your love language. But what's important is to meet that person at a point where you can also feed into theirs, you mm. know? Um, communication is very important. Um, I, I loved the lessons that we got on how to help, how to better communicate apology conversations because oh before this show me and apologies we are not the best of friends <laughs> i love your honesty about that i love your honesty yeah, me and apologies we are not the best of friends so the apology conversations for me were so key um i don't have it down perfectly but you know what at least i got like stepping stones and i'd say i'm kind of doing better now. 
Um, as well, I, I think the 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 you know when you when you when you come into a relationship with kids, mm-hmm. uh, having to share that responsibility with someone, better manage all of that because I mean two different parenting styles, two different people. You know, and um, just being able to trust somebody with that kind of responsibility as well, for me, was something that I feel like I needed to learn. Mm, so mm. I'm glad that at least I got that as well, help with that. Anything from your side that you think the viewers should know about your experience? It could be, you know, reality show-wise or love-wise. Just have fun, I would say. Take every moment as it comes. Always be honest. Always be open. And enjoy life. Don't think too much about it, I would say. Yeah, it it helps with transparency, I'd say. A hundred percent. I mean, you're opening yourself to everyone who chooses to watch. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's one thing I'll say about my experience is that it helps with transparency. And transparency is actually good. Mm. I was very uh, a private person before, even though it might not look like it. And... uh, Yeah, it's good to be open. Guys, thank you so, so much to all of you for coming through to talk about what it was like to find love on a reality show. We know that there are many, on many reality shows where the relationships did not survive. I wish all of you the absolute best, especially yourselves, uh, Kudani and Vivian. You guys have been together, already done the premarital counseling. I wish you the absolute best and you guys living together. There are some interesting dynamics there. (laughs) But according to the advice, you need to not find other couples who are living together to be friends with right okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much guys such a pleasure to have you on thank the show you thank too. you so much for thanks me. Vivian so for fun. thank you for having us thank you hashtag unpacked with Rile guys I'm a sucker for love like if you didn't watch this episode and get to know that I'm a sucker for love, ah, I don't know what you're not seeing. Hashtag unpacked with Rile Contact us via the socials. Did you have a favorite couple that actually found love on television? Let us know. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. Stacey spoke when she was nine months old. What? Sometimes when I'm introduced, people will say she wrote her first book at the age of seven without her parents' knowledge, and that is completely true. She addressed 1,200 metric learners when she was eight. Mm. At the age of uh, 12, I didn't know that she would be traveling around the world, you know. Mm. much for watching Unpacked with Rileb Khilema. I want you to make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.